Hi everyone, this is the plasma membrane lecture. We're going to talk about the plasma membrane. Specifically, we're going to describe the structure and function of the plasma membrane, explain how the structure of the phospholipid bilayer determines selective permeability, describe the function of proteins in the plasma membrane, including protein channels, transporters, enzymes, and cell adhesion molecules, and we're also going to define cell polarity and explain its significance for cellular function. The plasma membrane is a phospholipid bilayer with embedded proteins, cholesterol, and carbohydrates. This is an image which shows all of those different molecules. Let's zoom in a little bit, and I'm going to highlight the phospholipid bilayer. So here you can see we have the phospholipids making up the primary structure of the plasma membrane. And you can see there's a double layer of phospholipids. We also have different proteins, cholesterol, and carbohydrates. So the function of the plasma membrane is to create a semi-permeable barrier. It separates the intracellular fluid compartment and the extracellular fluid compartments. Here we refer to these as the ICF for intracellular fluid and ECF for extracellular fluid. The plasma membrane controls the entry of substances, allowing needed substances in, and the export of products and waste. It is a protective barrier to prevent the entry of unwanted substances or pathogens. Membrane selectivity is determined in large part by the phospholipids. The molecular structure of the plasma membrane is the key to this selective permeability. Phospholipids are lipid-based molecules that make up the foundation of the plasma membrane. Present in a double layer, the phospholipid bilayer. As I showed you in the previous diagram, but here they're zoomed in and we've pulled them out individually, you can see that they have polar or hydrophilic heads and nonpolar or hydrophobic tail regions. You can see that the hydrophobic tail regions make up a large portion of the membrane, and this is key to the selectivity. So the hydrophilic heads or the phosphate groups are charged, and they attract fluid and charged molecules. So we have a separation of fluid on either side. The interior of the cell where the ICF or in intracellular fluid is, and the exterior of the cell where the ECF or extracellular fluid is. Then those hydrophobic tails made up of non-charged lipid groups repel and prevent entry of the charged molecules, and that separates the fluids in the intracellular and extracellular compartments. The tails of those hydrophobic groups face the middle and form that selective barrier. So what gets in and what gets out of the plasma membrane? Moving freely through the plasma membrane will be small, uncharged, or nonpolar molecules. Some examples here would be steroid hormones, fatty acids, dissolved gases, oxygen and carbon dioxide, alcohol, and other small lipid-soluble molecules. This is really important when later we talk about transport and the ability for molecules to signal inside and outside of the cell. What requires channels, transporter proteins, or pumps and cannot move freely into the membrane? That would be charged molecules or large molecules that need transporters to get through the plasma membrane. Some examples here would be small ions, but they can't get in because they're small. Sodium, potassium, calcium, glucose, and other water-soluble molecules such as amino acids. So remember, small, nonpolar molecules can move through the plasma membrane. Other molecules will require channels, transporter proteins, or pumps. And we'll cover that more when we talk about membrane transport. So molecules that can't easily pass through the plasma membrane will, re will require channels and transporters. These channels and transporters are made up of proteins. So some proteins form channels or carriers across the membrane that are selectively gated and allow and regulate the entry and exit of molecules. Those are pictured here. We can see these integral membrane proteins, which are embedded within the membrane. 
And we can also see peripheral membrane proteins, either inside or outside of the membrane. And in those cases, those wouldn't form channels, but rather signaling molecules. As you can see, the integral membrane proteins can form channels or transporters that allow substances to pass across the membrane. So integral or transmembrane proteins can form channels or transporters that are highly specific, tightly controlled, and in some cases gated by many different processes. Let's talk a little bit more about channels and transporters. So some transmembrane proteins form channels or transporters allowing otherwise impermeable substances to move in and out of the cell. Channels are transmembrane proteins that form a selective pore. Once they're open, small molecules will flow fast according to their gradients. And that's a distinction between channels and transporters. Channels are extremely fast and they have an open pore with connection between the ECF and the ICF. Some examples here would be sodium channels and potassium channels. Transporters are also transmembrane proteins that bind specific substrates. Open to one side, they let the substrate through, then open to the other side. So there's no direct ECF-ICF connection, but they're, they're able to use gradients and get molecules across. So some examples would be glucose-sodium transporters, using the sodium gradient to move glucose into the cell. Um, another type of transporter would be an active transporter, a sodium-potassium pump, using direct ATP hydrolysis, hydrolysis to transport sodium and potassium. What about other proteins that are found in the membrane? In addition to forming channels and transporters, proteins have many functions in the cell membrane. Proteins can be enzymes, receptors, cell surface markers, and cell adhesion molecules. The so cell adhesion molecules are adhesion proteins on the surface of cells that hold cells together and bind cells to the extracellular matrix. Some examples here shown in your textbook are integrins, cadherins, selectins. You don't need to know the names of these cell adhesion molecules, but you might hear them later. It's important when we talk about cell adhesion molecules to also talk about the types of cell-to-cell -cell connections that are possible. This is because it can affect whether molecules are able to pass through layers of tissues. So the layers of cells may allow some substances to pass between cells or they might form tight barriers. Some examples of cell-to-cell -cell connections are desmosomes, which anchor two cells together with cell adhesion molecules. They can prevent overstretching of tissues. Tight junctions, which seal two cells together with small proteins, preventing leakage between the cells and forming very tight barriers. And then gap junctions, which directly connect the cytoplasm of cells, linked by proteins called connexon proteins, forming tunnels and allowing direct communication of molecules between two cells. Cell polarity is the separation or specialization of compartments and cell adhesion in certain cells to create a directionality. So polarity means direction. This is very important when movement of substances across certain cell layers is directional. For example, if we talk about moving substances from the inside of the digestive tract across the cells into the blood, or if we talk about moving substances from the blood across the cells and into the lumen of the digestive tract. These different functions of absorption and secretion, which are particularly important for epithelial cells, require polarity of cells. The apical surface refers to the top surface. This is normally the surface that faces the external surface or the lumen of an organ. Then we have the basal surface, which is bottom surface, which will be attached to the cell layers below or inward, away from the lumen. So these would be more towards connective tissues, towards the blood. This cell polarity allows for specialized functions, such as absorption and secretion, into and out of different compartments of the tissues. All right, that's it for cell membrane. Let me know if you have any questions.